Hi there, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing really well. So today I wanted to talk about the big four. No, I'm not talking about metal bands as fun as that would be. I'm actually talking about four different types of compression. Now, of course, there are more than four, especially in this digital world, but these big four, these main four are the four that tend to control our music production and mixing lives. They are, of course, VCA, Optical, FET, and Varial MU or Tube. That's what's coming up next. As usual, if you do like the video, do hit the like. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe and notification bell and I'll notify you of upcoming videos. Also, if you want some free stuff, sign up to the main list below and I'll send you a few things that you can use in your mixes. So welcome to part one in my series on compression. I thought it'd be good to start with talking about the different types of compressor that we use. Not only is it good to have a little bit of an understanding of how they work, but when you know that, then you might be able to make more decisions as to which compressor to use for which application. I'll try to keep it as concise as possible to just give you a little bit of, of a, a basic understanding of how each compressor can differ. So we're gonna start with number one, which is VCA. That of course stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. How does it work? Well, it basically uses a control signal to dictate the gain reduction. So it works in a similar way to a VCA fader. With a VCA fader, that fader is essentially telling each fader in the group to turn up or down by the desired amount. Well, this does a similar thing, except it's controlling the compression effect and the output path. So this is what the control signal is doing. And then usually with this type of compressor, included in that path, you get all of your favorite controls being attack, release, ratio, threshold, and often a knee. This type of compressor tends to be quite popular and you see all over the place, partly because it tends to have so many controls. So its functionality is really, really high. Now the main traits of this compressor would be it's more precise control, it's often cleaner and perhaps more predictable, and is also more linear with its controls. Essentially, if you tell it to do something, it's gonna do it. It's not gonna respond by how much you're throwing in. It's gonna respond depending on the controls that you're operating, hence voltage controlled amplifier. Main uses will often be in mastering or on a mix bus and also on groups of instruments. So you might have it on your drum bus or a guitar or a bass bus or something like that. Something where you need to have a pretty defined control and you're often wanting a fairly transparent sound. Some of the most famous VCA compressors will be the SSL bus compressor, which we'll see on so many mix buses all over the shop. The API 2500, uh, the Vertigo VSC2, and also the Shadow Hills compressor, although that is VCA as well as optical. Which brings me to the next one the optical compressor or otherwise known as Opto. So this one works in a slightly different way to some of the other compressors. It uses a light dependent resistor and a light source to control the compression. So the compressor's input illuminates the light source. The stronger the signal, the brighter the light source is gonna shine. And then as that light source shines on the resistor, it then causes the compressor to react. So the brighter the light source, the more the resistor is gonna work and therefore there's gonna be more compression. So just due to its nature, it tends to work much slower than some compressors, like especially slower than a VCA or a FET, which we'll get to next. They tend to have very limited controls. You you won't really see attack, release, and ratio on them because, as I said, it depends on the application. It depends what you're putting into it, mainly in its level, to how the compressor is going to react. So the main traits of this compressor will tend to be it's much slower to react and recover. It's non-linear in its actions, and it's much smoother and more natural, and, and it's often said more musical sounding. One example, if you're putting a very loud signal into it, it will initially react fairly quickly on, on its release. So say, say you've got 10 dB of gain reduction. On the, the first half of it, it's going to release fairly quickly, but on the second half, it's going to trail off much slower. So therefore, as I said, it's not linear, unlike a VCA. So it's much more application dependent. You often use this on vocals or bass or just generally something that you want to round out the sound a little bit. It can be great for smoothing out sharp transients. The most famous one will be Universal Audio's LA-2A. Such a fantastic compressor. And like most optical compressors, it's generally quite forgiving. Another famous one would be in the Avalon channel strip that you'll see in all over, all over the place in lots of different studios. I use it a lot myself, in fact. The, the 737 is a really great channel strip. And that has an optical compressor, which, as I said, much more forgiving. And that brings me to our next compressor. 
The next one is the FET compressor, otherwise known as Field Effect Transistor. Catchy title. So they use transistor circuits to operate and they respond very, very quickly to signal. Now these work very similar to a VCA compressor, but whereas the VCA responds to uh, the voltage of the, si of the incoming signal, the FET works with the electrical field as a whole, in addition to the voltage. So I, I know that, yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I won't bore you with the details of all of that because it's all a bit confusing, let's face it. But the main things you need to know are what they sound like and where you'd use them. So the main the main traits of this compressor is that it's, it's super fast in both its attack times and release times. They tend to be quite colourful and, and gritty sounding, but that's because because of how quickly they work, they can introduce distortion quite quickly. That can be quite a good thing. I actually, I, I really enjoy that trait and I use these compressors for that very reason, to, to give that kind of sound, to give that color. They also tend to be quite bright and quite punchy as well. So what would you use them for? Well, you generally would use them on drums, guitars, bass, more aggressive applications. It can also be excellent for parallel compression because when you slam these compressors, you get a lot of vibe, a lot of color, a lot of, as I said before, grit and distortion when you're mixing that into a signal it can give you a lot of energy the most famous FET compressor will be the Yuri 1176 this is it's probably my favorite compressor of all time if you could if you could even choose one it's just so vibey and so characteristic it's definitely not something that you'd put on on a master bus or for something very very subtle you're using this more to to, to make a bit of a statement even though you can use it for subtle things um, in general you, you're using this for a bit more of a statement and you're not necessarily using this to be transparent you're using it for its color you're using it for its vibe. Now last but by no means least is the variable MU or tube compressor. Now the tube compressor relies on the tubes that are inside to control the gain reduction. Now not to be confused with other compressors that just happen to have a tube inside them. Like an LA2A, that's got a tube inside it. But as discussed before, because it's an optical compressor, it uses the light source to control the gain reduction. So the tube that's inside that is actually just there to add a little bit of color, to add a little bit of vibe. Wonderful, we love vibe. But with the tube compressors, they actually use the tubes themselves for the gain reduction. Their controls can be somewhat similar to optical compressors and VCAs combined because you'll often have some controls on there which will be related to the attack and release times, but not necessarily described as that. Like one of the most famous ones, which maybe I'll put a picture up now, the Fairchild 660 or 670, whether you're doing mono or stereo, it has program controls on there, which are specific attack and release times that have been programmed into the unit, but it doesn't necessarily have an attack and release control. This can be the case with lots of tube compressors. But the main traits that you'll get with a tube compressor is that it's it's quite slow to react, especially to transients. It can handle very high levels before distortion, which is great, and it tends to offer quite a thick, creamy and colorful sound. If you imagine that a VCA or a FET compressor tends to grab the transients and controls them quite quickly, a tube compressor kind of massages them and just kind of gives them a little bit of a cuddle. Obviously, that's putting it very technical indeed. Uh, but, but where would you use this? Well, you tend to use this quite often as a as a mixed glue you know it can, it can help to glue things together it can help to smooth things out you can use it on a drum bus but you'd be you wouldn't be using it as much for the attack but more for giving it a vibe giving it just a little bit of energy a little bit of color you might often use it on vocals or on buses in general it's a great compressor for for an overall group or a mix bus most famous versions of course is the Fairchild 660 or 670 as mentioned earlier or the Manly Vary MU again this type of compressor tends to be quite forgiving because it's not so aggressive and can be wonderfully musical sounding and just helps to just give whatever you're putting into it a bit more vibe, a little bit more control. So there we have it. That's a fairly brief explanation of the big four, the four types of compressor. Now, of course, there are various other ones that work in slightly different ways or they're combinations of these four, but this is generally what you're going to see in all of your DAWs. Hopefully that'll give you a little bit of an insight of which one you might want to use for different applications, because the more you know about it, the more you'll be able to make better decisions when choosing which one to use and therefore get much better results. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you next time.